Aloha and welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. I'm your co-host Matthew Johnson here today with my special co-host Jasmine Slovak. And as always, we are here to talk to Hawaii farmers and foodies and restaurateurs and all types of people who are interested in Hawaii's food security. As always, you can find us on Thursday afternoons here at 4 o'clock. You can also find us later on YouTube at ThinkTechHI. And please, please, please join the conversation. You can either tweet us at ThinkTechHI, and you can actually even call in and talk to us in person uh, at the number listed below. Uh, so with that, we're going to go ahead and introduce our guest. Uh, this is crazy. I never thought it would actually happen, but we have two Jasmines uh, on set today. So with us today is Jasmine Joy with Believe <laughs> Hawaii. Did I say that right? You said that totally Yeah, right. I feel like you have to like just hold it out as long as possible. You probably even hold it longer. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for uh, joining us. And actually, you are a veteran of Think Tech uh, Hawaii. You've been on a show before. What was the show you were on before? Likeable Science with Ethan Allen. Likeable Science with Ethan Allen. Well, thank you again for, for showing up. Um, uh, joining us today. Well, thank you for inviting me and having me. Yeah. Um, so why don't we start off with, uh, just give us a little bit of background. So I know you're in the honey business and actually the beehive business. And so you brought some samples here. Um, to get started, why don't you just give us a little background on who you are and how you got into hanging out with bees. With bees, I believe it's truly in my DNA. My grandfather on my Nicaraguan side was a beekeeper. And I started beekeeping when I was living on the North Shore, and I was working for a company called Honey Girl Organics. So I used to manage their creamery department, and I learned how to beekeep from the founder, who is now the president of Hawaii Beekeepers Association, and his name is Anthony Maxfield. Awesome. So, so you're working with Beehive Hawaii, and so you were helping them get started. But then you started getting involved with relocating um, actual beehives themselves. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's one of the services that my company provides. So I'm an alternative source to extermination or pest control, as, as you would call it. And instead of the bees being killed when they have hives inside people's houses, I will humanely remove them, cut open drywalls from the inside of a house, even the outside, I catch swarms. So I, I got a bee hotline going and people call me and I just go and save the bees. And this is a, a huge deal because I mean, as we all know, and it's seeing a lot of reports lately that we're actually having a decimation of beehive colonies around the world, which is actually hugely detrimental just to the health of the world itself. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. It seems like you're referring to colony collapse disorder. Yes. So it's this phenomenon that's been considered a crisis for about a decade now. And for me, the way that I take care of my bees, my bees are doing great. I, d I check on both of my apiaries every 10 days to two weeks. And so the colony collapse disorder They've been trying, the research that they've been doing all these years, they've been trying to pinpoint exactly what the issue is, but it's a conglomeration of many things. So you have the three Ps. You have pesticides, you have pathogens, and then you have pests. So the pathogens are being carried by the pests, like the varroa destructor mite, and you, and one of them would be the deformed wing virus. Okay. And then you have another pest called the African small hive beetle. And what these little buggers do, I, I think they're like little Darth Vader's. Mm. They, it, <laughs> but they are. <laughs> they, they look like black ladybugs. Mm. And what they do is they poop. They defecate in all the honey cells and they rot the honey. I do believe that's Darth Vader's like biggest superpower too. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, like, just defecating all over the place. <laughs> uh, I was, think that's in the next episode. That's when he really true powers come out. <laughs> uh, well, so is this a disorder specifically? Like, how do they categorize this? Is this for honey farms specifically, or is this just like in general in terms of bee population? Like, what are they looking at when they're measuring when? when they're researching this type of problem? 
Well, I know that for the Varroa mites, what they do is the Varroa mites, they favor drones, which are the male bees. And if you look at a honeycomb, which, well, the honeycomb is in a frame, beekeeping terminology, and there's a distinction between there's honeycomb where they're storing honey, even pollen, and then there's area, there's honeycomb where they're storing brood, B-R-O-O-D, and those are bee babies. Mm. So you can even tell the difference between female worker bees and drones mm. because the drone brood will significantly stick out more and they're larger, mm. and that's why the varroa mites favor them because they are larger bees, mm. and what they do is they go inside the cell before the worker bees seal it. When a worker bee seals the cell, that means it's ready to pupate and turn into an adult bee, right? Yeah. So the varroa mite, and it's considered an arach, it, it's in the arachnid family. So it's got eight legs. It's oh. like the size of a mole, like, you know, Cindy Crawford, maybe smaller than Cindy Crawford's mole. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite measurement. <laughs> yeah. We all now know exactly what you're talking about. So they're like a reddish brown color, mm. and what they do is they latch on to the honeybees before the the worker bees seal the cell, and they're already sucking blood out of them and also giving them these pathogens. Like, oh, jeez. Yeah, it's very unfortunate and sad. So you're talking about the the I guess the hives that you're managing and maintaining. How is it that yours are doing so much better than? maybe some other ones. What is what is it that you're doing that's uh, working? I'm a holistic beekeeper. So everything I do is to benefit the bees. I don't use chemicals and I just tune in with them. Every hive has a different personality and every queen has a different way of being active. Mm. And so you could see the pattern in her brood and you could see how much honey they're pulling in. And so one way to maintain the pests that go inside my hives is I put weed mat down mm. below my apiary. And then one thing I learned this year from beekeeping with my boyfriend who's a beekeeper and another one of our friends, he learned that if you plant oregano below the hives, the beetles don't seem to like it at all. Okay. So this recent honey harvest we had in spring and we're about to do one in August, when we opened up the hives, we didn't see any beetles and oh, we were wow. so stoked. Yeah. So those are two ways. And then another thing is, because for me, I haven't noticed any mites in my hives. And if there are any, they're not overwhelming my hives, mm -hmm. but I have more of a problem of beetles. And this season, I've done such a great job compared to last year. Mm -hmm. I keep a log also of every time I check on my apiaries. And so, I totally got no. it. Sorry. Are you talking <laughs> about the, the, talk about. The, the, I know, yeah, the, the beetles. So you're talking about the, you know, the work you've been doing with your apiaries. Well, so it's on, it looks like you really look at the problem and find kind of almost like biohacking ways to come up like with this um, oregano and seeing that it's a real natural deterrent. So you're not really, you're really conscious of how you're structuring this and managing totally. these different problems. I remember now. So another way to control the beetles is I use two different on the bottom, they're called bottom boards, and there's these trays where you can store oil, and I just use mineral oil. You can use different types of oil, but at least even using mineral oil, the bees are getting minerals from it, mm. you know? So, and then on top, in between the frames, I use something called beetle blasters, and they're also oil traps with all these little pukas, holes in them, and what the bees do is they chase them into, these, into those areas, the same thing with the bottom board is there's like a mesh cover mm -hmm. between the hive and the bottom board. Mm -hmm. And so the bees are able to also, because what they do is they corral the beetles because they are like ladybugs. They have the hard shell. So the bees, when they sing them, it doesn't really affect them. And so what they do is they corral them and in corralling them, they'll corner them. And then the bees fall into all these little pukas and they drown in the oil. Yeah. No, that's, that's all the beetles. Did I say bees? Excuse me. No, no. Yeah, I said beetles. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, that's super fascinating, and, and I want to hear more about that, but also want to get into the, the business yeah. that you're in and actually talking about some of the honey that we have here. So unfortunately, we have to go to a break, but uh, we'll be right back after a short commercial break. Coach here. So, viva health coach. Viva la comida saludable. I co-host Hawaii Farmers Series with Matthew Johnson of Oahu Fresh. We talk about Hawaii's local farmers and their supporters. In order to have a vibrant and sustainable local food system, uh, farmers are always the foundation, but there's so many other people uh, involved in the community that help support those farmers. So we bring those folks onto our show every Thursday at 4 p.m. We get their backstory, their history, find out a little more about them, and we find out why they love what they do and their perspective and their advice on how we can continue to have a dynamic and vibrant and sustainable local food system. So we, again, we broadcast live every Thursday at 4 p.m. And you can also catch us on ThinkTech's YouTube channel as well as Alelo54. So we hope you tune in and join us. Thank you. Aloha and welcome back to White Food and Farmers series. I'm your co-host Matt Johnson here with Jasmine Slovak as my co-host and we are talking today to Jasmine Joy with B Leave Hawaii. <laughs> uh, as always you can join the conversation by tweeting in at, at thinktechhi or you can also call in at the number shown below. Nailed it. Uh, so cool so we're kind of talking about just bees in general, talking about beehives and uh, some of the pest problems that are out there and some of the challenges that colonies have and some of the practices that you're doing that are kind of a holistic approach, like you said. Um, what I want to get into now is talking about the, the business. So you kind of have a few different, uh, I guess, revenue streams, if you will, of what you're doing where you have the business of actually relocating the beehives and then you actually have the business of the honey that you're collecting, which you brought here today, and we can't wait to crack into it. Try. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, can you talk a little bit about um, you know, how that came about and how that works? Sure. Let's start with my partnership. So I have a partnership with Hoa Aina O Makaha, which is based out of Makaha. It's right next door to Makaha Elementary, and they are a nonprofit. So I umbrella under them. Okay. And I was awarded with a, a mini grant from Kokua Foundation this year. Right, congrats. To, thank you so much. <laughs> to remodel, we have an apiary house for the keiki there. And Gigi Kokyo, who is the, he is the executive director of Hoa Aina Omakaha. And about 37 years ago, I, I believe, he the this land there it's owned by the catholic diocese okay and it was barren it was like tumbleweeds and Gigi got there and he had a dream and he made it into this beautiful oasis mm. and so there's a partnership also with makaha elementary and pretty much every grade there has a project or a garden there mm. And I teach the third graders from Akaha Elementary because their focus is animal caretaking. So this beginning of this year, I totally re redeveloped their whole, they had a beekeeping program. The program is focused on Nakeki Oka'aina is what the program is called. And so with the third graders, since they, their focus is animal caretaking, they do, the apiary house is in the animal section. And so, but what I did this year, it wasn't just about beekeeping, is I redeveloped this whole program for them, and I based it not just about bees, but pollination altogether, mm -hmm. and pollinators. So we planted pollinator-friendly habitats and gardens for the bees and the butterflies and even the birds, and I was donated, I want to say like 400 packets of seeds from botanical interests. Mm. So that was really, that was great. Cool. Very cool. So on the last day of school, the kids were so happy. <laughs> Everybody, we all planted seeds. Everybody went home with a pot of their own. 
and they were just and even a little bit of honey and the kids were freaking out I was like, just promise me you eat it after school because yeah. the teachers yeah, 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 would be yeah. like that beekeeper girl Don't give them any sugar. <laughs> that's funny yeah so that's i love having that partnership Gigi is the best he supports everything and anything I do. I also offer workshops there too. So if anybody's ever interested, I'll be doing one in September. I have a big group of, it's like most of those kids I think are homeschooled. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now is the workshop specifically for children or can adults? Adults will be there too. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, and then you also sell honey from your apiaries. Apiaries. Air, apiaries. A very new A P I A R Y Apiaries. A I'm an apiarist. So apiarist is the scientific name for beekeeper, and apiary is a bee farm or a bee yard, place where you keep the bees. Oh, cool, learning all types of new stuff. <laughs> there you go. I know. Education. <laughs> you, should, you should come on the show more often. <laughs> Love I you every so week. Much. So yeah, the honey that I distribute is from the North Shore of Kauai. My boyfriend is also an apiarist, holistic. And his honey, our honey, was tested by the Sierra Club. And we learned that 80% of the honey in Hawaii has glyphosate in it, mm. which is the harmful... Roundup. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> and so our honey does not have any glyphosate in it. It's part of the 20%, 20 percentile. Wow. And this is probably... and this, So this is because you guys are, are separated away from other farming or yard activities where they're spraying? Well, he chose to put his apiaries in places that practice organic farming. Oh, okay. And I think we talked about this earlier before mm. the show, but the bees will forage in a five mile proximity. Mm. Of course, they will forage if there's a nectar flow and there's an abundance of flowers and trees to, to forage from in a closer area, mm -hmm. but they will go that far of a distance to get food. Wow. So furthermore, to talk more about the business, so that's the partnership. And then uh, the service, we did briefly speak about it already, is the whole beehive removal. Yeah. And then let's see, there's the so, honey. So, so you have someone like, let's say I have a beehive in my yard or it's in the drywall in my house. So a typical reaction, maybe someone calls up an exterminator and says, hey, I need to get this beehive out of there, but instead, they can get in touch with you. Yeah. And you said you're kind of becoming known as the the bee lady or the beehive lady? Well, I am in touch with a few exterminators. They have my contact and they refer me all the time. Cool. So people call them, they say, we have a bee problem. And they say, well, I'm sorry, but we don't kill bees, but here's our bee lady. She'll take care of you. Awesome. That's a great way to, to brand yourself and your, your business as the, the bee lady and as a way to I guess more peacefully come in and remove something that was considered a pest, but actually, so you're you're creating an opportunity to remove a problem and then move that somewhere where it's wanted, where it's going to be beneficial. Yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, what does what does happen to the bees when you remove them? Most of them are relocated because most of the work I do do is windward side and town. Okay. I do get calls on the west side, mm. but the APR I have in Waimanalo, it's at Honest Green's farm. Mm. My friend Elko, he, he does, he helps me do work because he's a carpenter also. So he helps me cut open the walls and seal them up and he does a great job. And it's great because then we just go to his farm and introduce new hives. And so the hives that I have there are doing well, but it's almost like a quarantine there. So if for instance, there's one hive we removed and I realized there were varroa mites in it and I just kind of, I didn't freak out, but I was like, we gotta get this. Because if they're in one hive, they'll possibly go in the other hive. So I had oh, to yeah. remove that right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the awareness of being a beekeeper, the attention to detail. Mm. Cool. So actually, I have to interrupt real quick because I'm just hearing in my ear that we actually have a phone call. Uh, our first one ever. Cool. Uh, yes. So coming, Hi, Hawaii coming Food live and Farmers. Through. Uh, hello, and welcome to Hawaii Food and Farmers. Aloha. I have a question. I'm wondering if there's any kind of bee rescue service, kind of like how you rescue animals. Is there anything Believe Hawaii does to rescue bees? 
Did you hear the question? Didn't, yeah, you're going to have to share with us. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So I thought everybody was hearing the question. So the question, uh, caller, could you repeat the question? So I'm actually wondering if there's some kind of bee rescue service. Oh, okay. So the question is, is there like a bee rescue service? Yeah. That's what the beehive removal service is. Yeah, okay. It is a rescue service. Great. To the rescue. Yeah, to the rescue. So beehive rescue. Okay. Yeah, great. Thanks, caller. All right, fantastic. So, out of curiosity now, because from what I've learned um, from some of the notes that we were given is that obviously there are many different types of bees, and there are native bees to Hawaii, and there are bees that were introduced. Like, do you have, when you typically go and rescue bees, is there like a way that you integrate or do they all just kind of live together or do you kind of colonize? How does that work exactly with the different types of bees? I basically domesticate them. So... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why, but that just sounds funny. Uh, it's like you're putting them in their place. Mm. No more going out and no, I bee, mean, they're, bee partying. No, I mean, they're free. They're totally free. They can go do whatever they want. Mm. But I basically, I basically give them real estate and I say, here's your condo. Mm. If you like it, I hope you stay for a while and you build great furniture and yeah. your other, community other amenities. drives. Make some honey. Yeah. But, you know, there are some cases where they will swarm. And there's nothing that I can do about that. I can, I, like I said, I stay on it and I check on my hives and everything mm. regularly. Mm -hmm. But sometimes... Like recently, I did a removal and they swarmed, but mm. I they were there for like ten days, and I tuned in. And I was like, I, I think I gotta check on my bees today. And just that day, I get there, and Elko goes, "I was gonna call you, so there they are." And we saw them in a high tree. Oh, uh, okay. You know, and swarming is what exactly? So swarming is total natural thing that bees do, mm. and right now it's bee season. We're, we're we got a couple more months to go mm -hmm. in Hawaii. I mean, we have dry and wet season, but in spring and the summertime, that's when the bees are buzzing mm -hmm. heavily mm -hmm. and there's nectar flowing there from all the flowers. And so that they're collecting all that, bringing it back to the hive. But then at the same time, the queen is producing more babies. Mm -hmm. And in the summertime, a, a worker bee will only live up to six weeks. Wow. So their lifetime is pretty short. And in that lifetime, it takes, or in, let's see, I want to say a twelfth of a teaspoon. In a honeybee's lifetime, it, they can, they, it takes them, in those six weeks, they could produce a twelfth of a teaspoon of honey. That's all they produce? Yeah. And so it well, takes about, to, to make one pound of honey, two million flowers need to be visited. Wow. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a lot of worker bees' <laughs> lives that were sacrificed for this jar of honey. Wow, that makes it that much more special. But what's even more fascinating is the queen bee could live up to five years. Oh, I mean, she's, like, <laughs> she's right? living the Seems life. about right. <laughs> I guess so. Um, so um, one thing I wanted to talk about too is so we have the honey, and we, now we understand all the lives, all those worker bees the, are given up for this honey. that is given into that yeah, honey. Yeah, wow. Um, where are you guys, so you guys are selling the honey. You have it available on market. Where where can people find it? It's top tier honey. Exactly, top tier honey girl. <laughs> so it's just, <laughs> wow. it's just direct selling. Like the number one steakhouse in Honolulu, which is Wolfgang Steakhouse, mm. they purchase our honey and they put it in their cocktails and some of the food wow. and Sometimes we do seasonal festivals, mm -hmm. like we just did. I mean, it was a few months ago, but we did the Kahumana Farm Festival. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was really successful. That's great. Do yeah. you guys, can someone purchase it online at all? No, we're, we're working up to that. Okay. But we're very, we, we call tuned. ourselves boutique beekeepers. Mm -hmm. So we're not commercial beekeepers, and we don't ever plan to be because the type of work and that, it's just that's just it's just too much sure. and a lot of those commercial beekeepers are using pesticides and everything like that because there's so many bees beehives they have it's hard to take care of them yeah. so we only have probably a couple minutes left can you talk a little bit about kind of the future of bee leave hawaii but also just the bee industry in general are we going to have bees 
in Hawaii in the next 10, 20, 50 years? I think so. I hope so. Because of believe. Because of believe. <laughs> you got to believe. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, I'm trying to pump up my farm tours at Honest Greens Farm. I'm offering those. And there's they're small groups. Like, the biggest group would be like four people. Mm -hmm. I could probably do six, but I would prefer to keep it intimate like that. Mm -hmm. And my goal is also to do some outreach. So right now I'm doing all the research and I'm working on writing a grant, a few grants. And then another thing too, I'm a writer. So one of my big dreams and goals, and I just found my illustrator, is to produce my first children's book oh, nice. about oh. honeybees. Yeah. Cool. So, so tell us more about the book, though. I mean, I don't want to give it away. Oh. That's the next <laughs> this can but, be like exclusive just, here. On I can just tell you that it's about the life cycle of a honeybee. Okay. I'm not going to give you away the best part. Okay. Well, after you publish the book and it's out, we'll have you back and you can talk all about it. Wonderful. Thank right you. On. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today. Thanks again for joining us, Hawaii Food and Farmer Series, with my co-host, Jasmine Slovak, and our guest, Jasmine Joy from Believe Hawaii. <laughs> we'll see you again next week, Wednesday, Thursday at 4 p.m. Aloha.